Hello Year 7 and welcome to today's lesson. Now I'd like us to start by recapping. We've been looking at how castles have developed over time. And we talked about how in 1066 William bought a kind of flat pack castle across with him from Normandy and immediately began building these on the south coast in order to ensure his conquest of England was successful. These went on to be improved into modern Bailey castles, which he used in the years following the conquest in order to assert his control. Over the next hundred years, these were replaced by stone keep castles, which were better fortified and a great defensive improvement. Now, across the remainder of the medieval period, so over the next few centuries, these stone keep castles were built upon and perfected, and they finally turned into a concentric castle. Now, concentric castles are the height of castle building, and if you've ever been to perhaps Warwick Castle or Dover Castle, you know what we're talking about. A castle with a really sophisticated form of defence around it. So today we're going to be looking at this final kind of castle, the concentric castle. Please can you put concentric castles as your title and add today's date. Now we're going to be focusing on the defensive features of concentric castles to work out why they were hard to attack. Now what was happening in the medieval period was people were getting better and better at attacking castles. Have a look at this image to find six different ways they used to attack castles. You may need to pause the video in order to self to give yourself enough time. Have you spotted them? Well, down in the left-hand corner, we have a battering ram. Here they're trying to use brute force to bring down the walls, or probably more likely, a, a door. Then we have a manganel, which is the sort of crossbow, giant crossbow that you can see down there. We have the archer protected behind the mantlet over here and we can see that we have some people tunnelling under the walls. Now they weren't tunnelling in order to pop up on the other side of the walls and um, find a way into the castle. They were tunnelling in order to make the walls fall down. So in order to undermine the foundations of the wall so that they'd collapse. At the top we have a trebuchet, this kind of big catapult, and in the centre we have the siege tower which you would climb in order to get onto the top of the walls. So what we're seeing here is the development of a whole array of different weapons to attack castles. Now, as these attack methods became better, so castle defences had to improve as well in order to stop the invaders. So what we have is a form of arms race. That is, both sides are improving their technology and weaponry to try and outdo the other. Today, we're going to look at some of the methods that concentric castles had to defend themselves, so some of their key defensive features. Overall, we'll look at 11 key features. We're going to record each of them in a table like this that has our feature on the left hand side and explains how it helps to defend the castle on the right hand side. <clears throat> Let's start off with our first example, the moat. So, we put feature, moat, how it defends the castle. We'd write, the moat defends the castle 
as it makes it difficult for invaders to reach the curtain wall and so prevents the use of battering rams and siege towers. Have a look now through the rest of the key features here on the next few slides and complete your table. Once you've finished um, looking at each of the key features in turn and explaining how they help defend the castle, I'd like you to print this off and add on to each of the, um, the labels there the key feature. So for example, uh, top right hand corner, RT, it's pointing to round towers. Can you try adding on each of the key features? to this image.